Welcome back to Faces Behind the Business on Village Connector TV. We're continuing our conversation with Nancy DeLuca Stemple, the Executive Director of the Learning Community International, on this unique and empowering learning experience that is offered through TLCI. And you're just in time to find out what the parent's role is in this learning experience. So let's get right into it. What is the role a parent plays in this customized, individualized, empowering learning experience for the child? Well, sometimes people think when they think of homeschooling, you know, they think the parent has to do everything. Um, and in our unique blend of uh, private school and fusion of homeschooling, we provide a lot of uh, resources, subject specialists, teachers and tutors, if you'd like them. Um, so the parent's role can be uh, in, in different ways. They could be overseeing the whole program and bringing in different resources and people and subject specialists and um, making sure all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted. Um, or they can play a role in being a, a, a teacher as well. But their, the main role is, you know, just like if you're going to a private school or a public school, ultimately the parent is responsible for the child's education. So it's, it still has that role that they're ultimately responsible, but they don't have to do everything. I have a confession to make. That was probably the most intimidating part about making the decision to go to TLCI and have Nolan you know, educated there. And the reason was that we felt that with him getting ready, basically going to high schools, we started with him in eighth grade, getting ready to go into high school, would we be equipped to provide the academic support that he needed in order to get the job done at the level that would be consistent with you know sure. what's, what's expected in high school Absolutely. traditionally. And you were able to put uh, our minds dramatically at ease by reminding us that it wasn't about how much we knew about these subjects. It was about finding the resources with people that knew about the subjects. Right. And we worked with our academic advisor and we actually had the ability to select from a variety of different resources for every subject and that made that that immediately put our minds at ease because we were thinking well we don't know calculus I don't I never took calculus right I only was required to take al algebra th through uh, high school right but the point I'm trying to make is that the role of the parent is what the parent decides they want the role to be you can be as active or as, now you gotta do some supervision, but what I'm saying is that you don't have to be the teacher on every subject. You don't have to be a teacher on any of the subjects. Right, you'll find that at the elementary school level, and starting to go into middle school, but at elementary, you're, you're doing a lot of that yourself. As you're going into the middle school level, you're starting to see the student uh, have different kinds of interest, and you're going out really into the community. Um, there are a lot of co-ops out there where um, parents are kind of team teaching students. Um, and at the high school level, students could be enrolled, uh, uh, dual enrolled in the community college. So at different ages, there's um, different roles the parents will the parents will play. And just to show a parent where that shows up in, in real life in this context, this year, Nolan is going into 10th grade. And he's decided that one of his school projects for the entire school year is going to be to build a business from scratch. Nice. Now up to this point, my wife had been playing the primary role mm -hmm. with respect to crafting his curriculum with him mm -hmm. and picking the courses with him and helping him to find the things that he wanted to do in the way he wanted to learn them. Now I have the ability to step in with what's relevant within my area of expertise, you know, helping people get started in business especially and marketing those businesses and provide a real educational experience from a very practical perspective in my comfort zone. Right. And right. so I'm very much looking forward to his 10th grade year and beyond. That's, that's, that's really exciting. Sometimes parent, fathers wonder how they're going to play the role because usually the mothers are staying at home. Um, sometimes families will hire an academic manager. We have some families enrolled in the learning community who are both entrepreneurs. They own their own businesses. And they're, they're, sometimes they're at home, sometimes they're not. The schedules are shifting. They're you know, wearing different hats. So um, they hire someone as an academic manager to make sure that they oversee everything. So um, yeah, there are different roles that um, parents play. Um, sometimes you'll see a grandfather or an auntie or maybe their grandmother was an art teacher. So you have a community sharing their expertise and as well as the family, the extended family. 
Well, that's a great point, and let's talk. Let's let's talk a little longer on that subject then. When you're crafting your educational experience, you can draw on the resources of anybody that's got experience with that subject matter. Like you said, grandparents are very actively available because by a lot of them are retired, mm -hmm. they're available, right? And they have learning experiences that would be valuable to a student, and it's just that they don't normally get credit for it if they're in a traditional learning environment. Correct. You also have people that have relationships with, you know, for example, I as a, as, as a, as a father that, you know, has uh, experience with legal work, it's not a matter of me being the lawyer. I can make arrangements for one of my colleagues Absolutely. to help my, help my student with a, uh, a law course Absolutely. or a subject matter related to law, contracts, for example. Right. That's going to be part of Nolan's experience. Right. He's going to be entering into agreements. He's going to need to know how to do that. Exactly. And he's not going to want to hear it from his dad. Right. So let me so let me ask the question. You mentioned that you know obviously we you mentioned that a lot of times the the, the, the traditional household the father went to work and the mother stayed home and that has changed dramatically Absolutely. over the years, where we sometimes have uh, often have two wage earner households. Right. And so, some of the parents out there might be thinking to themselves, well, what if I don't have the time that's necessary to commit to this learning experience? You mentioned academic managers. Mm -hmm. Is that something that the academic advisor can recommend and help you to put into place? We could, um, depending, because we're all over the world, so sometimes we can recommend academic managers in, in the local Maryland, D.C. area, um, but we have, we have people in other states that have found retired teachers um, or college students in their graduate program, maybe they're going towards education or majoring in, um, you know, um, different kind, maybe even counseling, that um, take this on. And um, they do that. They, they actually, you know, do that academic managing role. Um, and then what we do is we teach them, that academic manager, how to interface with the whole team so all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted. So um, we can make referrals locally, it's a little harder to make it um, um, extended, although there has been a um, nanny company that I reached out to in Pennsylvania, and she said, you wouldn't, you'd be surprised how many college students graduate, how many, how many college graduates we have that can't find a job in their field, and they come to do nannying, and they actually are, have teaching, you know, they've majored in, in teaching, and they would be perfect to be in that kind of situation. Um, so we've done some referrals like that. Well, that's a great point. And so what we're really saying is that a parent's lack of time or unavailability to be the primary supervisor right. of the learning experience is not a reason for someone to disqualify themselves from this learning uh, and educational environment. Correct. There are options. It's just a matter of being open to exploring those options, and you can discuss those with them. Yep. Fantastic. Absolutely. Well, Nancy, we're going to continue the conversation, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more now about what the student's role is in the learning experience. So please come back and join us. <laughs> 